Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to talk about Visual Studio Code, which is a source code editor developed by Microsoft that has become the editor of choice for millions of developers around the globe, making it the number one source code editor for a lot of different programming industries according to a survey from Stack Overflow. In this video, we are going to find out why it has become such a wildly popular code editor and we're going to tweak its settings to make it perfect for Python development. Let's get started. The first thing that we want to do, of course, is to install the editor in our system. I'm currently browsing the homepage at code.visualstudio.com and because I'm currently using a Linux distribution, the website is showing me first the download links for Linux. However, you can just press the arrow button to get access to the download links for all major operating systems. Alternatively, if you are using Linux, depending on the distribution that you are using, you might also want to check your package manager. I'm currently on Manjaro and as you can see, it's listed in the distributions repo making really easy its download and installation. Once you open the editor, you will find yourself in front of a very similar screen. We got a bunch of links on the left, other links on the right side, we got a typical panel on the top part, and we also got these five icons right here. I believe there are a couple of reasons why everybody keeps talking about Visual Studio Code. And of course, these are the same reasons why so many developers are choosing it as their main source code editor. First of all, it's really fast. Even though it's made with Electron, it's clear that the team working on it is putting a lot of effort into making a really fast piece of software. Using the most recent versions, there has not been one single time when the system got stuck, even under heavy load. And you can also see that each aspect of the editor is well thought and polished. As an example, here in the welcome screen, we can just click on interface overview to get a really comfortable and beautiful overview of all the main features of the program. In a fraction of a second, we instantly understand what the user interface is all about. We've got five icons on the left, which let us access the most important functionalities of the program a file explorer, search across files, which also includes replace functionality, then we got source code management, which makes it a piece of cake to work with our project's repository, then we got a launch and debug, and the debug functionality alone are really fantastic. Then we got an extensions manager, which allows us to download and install different extensions for the editor from the marketplace. Then we know that on the view left side of the screen, we got view errors and warnings. On the right side, we got notifications. We can toggle an integrated terminal, which is really fantastic with this key combination and get a menu with all the available commands with the control shift P combo. So let's explore these functionalities a bit. We got the file explorer, search and replace, source control management, the debugger, and the extensions manager. And as you can see, I've already installed three extensions. The first one, Python, was released by Microsoft and includes all the most important features that are needed for Visual Studio Code to really support Python. We can scroll down the page to actually read the details. We got automatic indenting, code navigation, code definition, support for multiple linters, IntelliSense and autocomplete, and a lot of really useful features for debugging, like watch window, evaluate expression, of course, add remove breakpoints, but also complete support for web applications development and debugging. You can just search for Python within the text input, and of course, a variety of different extensions will pop up. The one that I'm currently using and that I really suggest you download, as I said, has been published and is currently maintained by Microsoft and is therefore the most reliable among all of them. As you might have noticed, I've installed also two more packages, which are Visual Studio IntelliCode, which provides AI-assisted productivity features for Python, TypeScript, JavaScript and Java developers. As we can read, with insights based on understanding your code context combined with machine learning. And we can see an example of IntelliCode in action right here below with TensorFlow. 
I've also installed Vtour or Vtour, which offers a bunch of very useful features for Vue.js developers. So let's go back to the file explorer and let's open up a folder and within this folder we can now start a project. For example, I can go ahead and create a new file by clicking on this icon or right clicking with the mouse, new file. And let's just call it hello vs code.py. And as we can see, a message pops up which tells us we need to download and install Microsoft Python language server. Just click on enable it and reload window. And once reloaded, we see that another message showed up, this time asking us to enable PyLint, a linter for Python. We can click enable, and the reason why the program asked us to install a linter for Python is because, thanks to the Python extension we've installed, Visual Studio Code now knows all the Python executables that are installed in our operating system. You can see that on the bottom left, right here, we can read Python 3.7.2, which is one of the versions that are installed in my system. And as a matter of fact, we can click on the name of the version of Python that's currently enabled to get a list of all the Python interpreters that are available in our system. And the really cool thing is that virtual environments are shown as well. We can then just click on one of them, like this one that's created with Anaconda, so that all the code that we're going to run from now on is going to be executed with the Python interpreter we've just chosen. Before starting to write code, let's have a look at the global settings of Visual Studio Code. We can go to File, Preferences, Settings, and here we can customize all the global settings for the program, such as, for example, font size. I can, for example, set it to 18, considering that I am recording a video. And one feature that I always enable on a fresh install is the vertical ruler, which is going to show a vertical line after a certain amount of characters. And we can customize this number by clicking on edit in settings.json. Then we must copy editor.rulers. And within the array, we can specify a number, for example, 79 which as you may know is Python's standard line length. So let's now save and close the JSON file and let's look for team instead. We can click on appearance and from here, as we can read, we can specify the color team used in the workbench, which means basically that we can change the color team for all the user interface. So let's click on the drop down menu and we can already see a quite large number of different themes. There is, for example, Kimbi Dark, which is quite cool. But in the end, I normally go with Monokai, which I find really elegant. So let's now close these settings altogether. And let's start to write some code by importing the random module. Let's also switch the window to the Explorer. Maybe let's shrink it a little bit. And as you can see, we also have the vertical ruler. So by hovering the mouse on top of the definition we've just imported, we can basically see its documentation, the comments of the module itself. And by right clicking on the mouse, we can directly go to the definition. So it's really easy, as you can see, to open up the module and dive into its code. And we can achieve the same result by clicking on Ctrl and then hovering on the definition. As you can see, I can then just click on the mouse to go straight to the definition. We can also peek into the code by right clicking on the module's name and then selecting peak definition. Really cool. So let's write some more. Print hello world and then maybe right below print random the choice and here I'm going to pass a list foo bar spam and X. Now to execute the code, we can just right click with the mouse and then select run Python file in terminal. And as you can see, the virtual environment that we're using gets activated automatically and our code gets executed. And it must be said that Visual Studio Code's terminal really is professional. As you can see, it's divided in four parts, the terminal itself, a debug console, an output, a window, and a problems window. 
and we can also have more than one terminal opened at the same time. I can do, for example, terminal, new terminal, and I can now select the one that I want to use by this drop down menu. One and two. Really cool. If you need to, you can also execute just one single line or a portion of code. You just have to select the code that you want to execute, like so, then right click with the mouse, run selection or line in Python terminal. And as we can see, the random module was imported and the print function executed. Another useful way to execute your code with Visual Studio Code is to use the debug window. I can expand it for now. And as you can see at the moment, the drop down menu says no configuration. I can click on add configuration or the gear icon right here to select a specific configuration to execute our code. From the drop down menu, we can now see that a couple of them have already been pre-configured, like the one that allows us to fire Django's development server automatically without having to write python manage.py run server all the time. And we can actually find the settings right here in the JSON file. But of course, we're not using Django now, so the one that we want to use is Python current file integrated terminal. I can now click on the green triangle right here. And as you can see, a new terminal got activated, the debug console one, a script got executed, and now we can also find the debug output right here in the debug console. And of course, considering that we're talking about a debugger, we can also set some breakpoints, like for example, one and two. And if we execute the code now, once again, we can see a lot of really useful informations here on the left. First of all, call stack, and then right here on the top, the local variables. We can now jump to the next breakpoint by clicking on this arrow, step over one, and as you can see, we get hello world, and then clicking on it once more, we get a selection from our list, in this case, spam. So as you can see, Visual Studio Code really is a very powerful editor, in my opinion, a step above all the other most famous ones like Sublime and Atom. I suggest you go and have a look at its documentation at code.visualstudio.com slash docs, where you will find a lot of very useful information to get the best out of it. So that was it for today, thank you so much for reaching the end of the video, if you haven't already, please subscribe, leave a like on the video and tell me what you think about this editor on the comments right below. I really hope you enjoyed these videos because there are a ton more coming out. So that was it everybody, as always, stay awesome and happy coding!